Listening in on that is Professor Mzigayise Benza. He is a political analyst. Prof, thank you very much for your time this morning. What is it that you heard on that manifesto that you did not hear before? Um, good morning, um, ma'am, and uh, in the newsroom, Africa listeners. Uh, it was very interesting, um, the launch of Action SA, because uh, what is different is more of the, the time frame that they put into whatever they want to do. They want to end loading, uh, uh, load shedding within two years when they take the power. So in that way, they are being realistic that if somebody is saying they can fix it within six months, to them they say, no, it's impossible. This thing requires two years. They, they need 30 years to ensure that all the inclusivity of black people in the mainstream of the economy is successful. So they, they, that is what is actually different. And then also, um, they seem to be driving the politics without any, any ideology. And that is basically different because all other parties... Uh, particularly those who want to lead have a certain ideology behind them so that makes their politics more attractive and uh, so that we can all see that it is, it is, it is, it is driven towards a certain line. They belong to a certain group of worldview around the world. That to me is actually different. And then also the, 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 the politics of fixing, you know. So we, we've been having some, you know, ideals, uh, goals and the manifesto that based on idealism, but he is, uh, is more based, based on fixing. We want to fix. We, we've done our research, and this is how we want to fix um, the country going forward. Mm. In fact, a number of parties have promised to fix South Africa. And so when you take a look at the detail, because the devil is in the detail, in the event that Action SA enjoys an outright majority, how do you perceive that they will be able to do that? Because whenever a new administration comes in, they have to find people who are serving the old administration who are in public service. And for them to get on board with the vision that you are selling sometimes is a little bit sticky. As we saw in the city of Johannesburg um, under Dr. Mpopalate at the time. And so how do you perceive they're going to navigate that or how it should be navigated? Um, I, I, to me, it's, it's, it's more about the kind of words that they are using. They seem to be more towards the meritocracy point of view to say we are, we are going to be inclusive. That means um, they won't be looking for affirmative action as such, but they'll be looking for a, any South African that have got skills and experience and competency to take positions of power. That, to me, is not only about the inclusive economy, but it's also inclusivity in terms of driving the agenda that they actually have. And then also, the, 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 they also look for opportunities. You know? so, so it means that, for, therefore, that um, they may be looking for opportunity, uh, not only in terms of the fund that they, 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 they want to build, but opportunities in terms of around the world who can also come and help us. So I think to me those two words are basically telling me a lot about how they will be getting the skills to drive their agenda because this is basically a new party. Is I mean as you as you as you as you saw, it was not launched in a in a in a in a in a big big uh, kind of. So it, it basically tells us about the the numbers that they are actually pulling. But should they get should 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 God of politics be with them? and they get into positions of power. And obviously, they will need to actually draw a lot of skills from black and white, colors and Indians. Um, and, and that, to me, is basically what the inclusivity means. And then also grab opportunities to look for other skills around the world. Mm -hmm. Action SA um, is still part of the multi-party charter. And so in the event they do not enjoy an outright majority, um, the parties that they have gone into a coalition with, what is your analysis of the future prospects? You see, you will notice, uh, ma'am and the listeners, that the parties, very few parties that went to this uh, party coalition and signed the charter have um, a, a different manifesto to say, uh, once we join the coalition, this is what we are going to do. Remember, once you get into a coalition, you need to exchange amongst themselves, amongst yourselves, that, you know what, I'm going to take this position, and then and this is the agenda that I'm, I, want, I want to push. But you need to exchange, and it may not be 
the things that you sold to the manifesto that will be, be that that you'll be pushing. You may be pushing um, another party's uh, ideology, another party's manifesto. If you are actually taking the, the, the position of power, if you're given a, a seat like a mayor or like a premier, sorry, like a premier or like a minister. So um, I, I see a huge challenge. Um, to them, basically, when they get into the into the into the coalition, regardless of them signing that um, uh, charter.